Swaddling is an ancient technique that involves wrapping your baby in a blanket for warmth and security. Swaddling, it's also said, has many health benefits from soothing colic to helping in the prevention of cot death. Well, as we're about to see, swaddling has now moved in the t into the 21st century with the cosy cocoon. Yola Filipek, who sells the cocoon, and Abby Fuluk, and her baby Megan are here to show us how it works. Hi there, you lot. Hello. Megan, look, she's going to fall asleep. <laughs> she's the Hope perfect that's... baby. I love that. <laughs> so first of all, Yola, I've got to start with yes. you. You've got to fill us in on this whole swaddling thing. I mean, I know what it is, but just for those that don't, what is swaddling? Well, swaddling basically is uh, just wrapping a baby quite tightly. That's why I think for the last 20 or 30 years, people just refused doing this uh, because they were afraid to swaddle a baby very, very tightly. Whereas now, Whereas because now uh, it's coming back. Yeah, because when, when you have a baby now, they teach new mothers in the hospital. Did you, did you get shown how to swaddle a baby in yeah, the hospital? Yes, well, the first thing the midwives do is swaddle them in, in two blankets and, and have them all wrapped up nice and tight. The idea, obviously, being that it's, it's like being in the womb in a sort of tight, compact right, space. Yeah. And, and, and why do we do it? Why well, is it good for the baby? The babies just feel safe and secure mm. because they were being inside for almost nine months in this kind of environment. So mm. why? when they just coming out not to support them with similar thing. It's essentially a comforting thing then. Uh, we know that the baby likes it. Um, what kind of evidence is there for that? I mean, do, do they make the babies happier or, or better behaved? I mean, Megan isn't being swaddled now, so perhaps that's the, that's the problem. But what, what, what is the evidence for it? Well, when you swaddle a the baby, they, you can see on their face they feel better. Mm. So we swallow Abby. Yeah. This, is, this would be a good time to do it. So let's, uh, let's, let's how, would you, uh, how would you swaddle Megan using the cosy cocoon? Let's okay. see it. So when, when she's ready for bed. She just said the words and she's happy. <laughs> yeah. I normally just lie her down on my lap so she's nice and comfortable. Mm. And then you gather the cocoon up as if you were putting on a sock yourself. You just gather it all up, mm. put it over her feet, and then you can just slowly swoosh it up. And there you go. And that's it. And the idea being that now, I mean, she's all sort of tightly wrapped in it. And you, do you tuck her arms in? Um, I don't tuck her arms in any longer. As you probably just noticed, she does suck her thumb a lot of the time. Right. So she prefers her arms to be out now. When she was newborn, though, at um, three, three weeks when we first got it, we did put her arms in. Um, because we found that she was waking up in the night when she was flailing her arms around. Yeah. They would go in front of her face and she'd get quite scared. Well, it's, 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 what's it called? it's called something, a reflex thing, isn't it? If babies right. do it, newborn babies, they don't mean to do it, but their arms they and do. legs will start doing it and it, make, it shocks them, so yeah, it, it upsets right. them. That's right. So this would prevent that from happening. But also, I guess the other thing is um, restriction of growth. There's going to come a time where they need to have their arms out, is that right? It's about three, four months, but uh, I have a couple of customers. They actually uh, having right now the large size, which is up to six months. So all this depends on the baby. It's certainly working, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> and and do, you, uh, do you wear clothes all the time underneath it, or can it, can it just be a nappy? Um, I'm sure you could probably just use a nappy, but now it's getting to the winter months, yeah. we find that we prefer to put her in a long sleeve baby grow at nights as well, so that when her arms are out, she doesn't get too cold. Well, while we're on the subject of the temperature, surely it's quite warm and snug in there, which is a good thing, but do we worry about them being too hot, too warm? Well, you just have to check your baby, basically, in the back of your neck. If it's too hot, just take one layer off, that's it. And is it for all day, or is it essentially for sleep time? Uh, I would say for a sleep time, but most of the babies actually are living in that cocoon for my, my one, uh, my little Victoria, she lived in that cocoon for three months. So. And there's nothing wrong with that? No. You think that's great? So let's get a bit of a background here. Why did you start looking into this? Why have you created the Cozy Cocoon? Well, it's not my product. It's an it's American product. But uh, I discovered that product when my baby was born two years ago. Mm. Uh, we do swaddling in Poland and uh, I was fed up with a normal blanket. I just couldn't. I just couldn't learn the way. You know, it's, it's quite compli it's complicated. It's complicated. You don't know if you're doing it right, you yeah. worry. And when you are breastfeeding and, you know, when you are 
uh, very tired and it's in the middle of the night, you just don't want to wrap your baby. You just, you just, you just, you just too tired to do it. Yeah, so it's a lot easier just pulling on a socket, exactly. as, as we said. Now, what I, what I really want to get to is, is what made you think that you needed something like this? I mean, there's a story about you going on a trip to South America. Tell that's us about right, that. That's right, that's uh, right. Before babies, uh, we decided to go uh, to have a trip around South America, and the first things which I discovered was no crying babies around. Uh, you honestly just noticed there was no crying babies no around crying in general? No crying babies in general. And you noticed that? It's interesting. Uh, well, you, you know, before I was a uh, nanny in, mm. for a couple of months in London and uh, the, the crying babies was, was a, such a normal thing. Mm. And where well, you just left the baby and the baby was crying and yeah. the people were saying, oh, just leave them, they have to cry. Whereas in Mexico and, and South uh, American no countries. Babies. And why? Because? Because actually moms, they were wearing their babies on the back or in the front. Mm. And what I discovered, they were close to their babies, just to holding them, huddling, cuddling them, you know, giving them a hug. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a culture thing. So I remember reading an article recently that, that was basically saying how everyone says now you should leave your baby to cry. You know, there's nothing wrong with the baby, the baby's fine, leave him to cry. But I, I read this article and the woman who wrote it was saying, why do that? Why? It's an unnatural thing to do. And she actually mentioned African cultures where as soon as the baby's born, the baby doesn't leave the mother's side. They carry it That's around right. pretty much 24 hours a day in a kind of blanket, so much like a, a swaddling type of thing. And the babies never cry. They just feel happier. They feel content. Well, so why do so we do it? Why do we leave the babies to, to cry? Just hold them and, and cuddle them, you know, as much as you can. They're growing very fast. And it's not just it's not just us mothers, doctors. When we said when you're in hospital that, that they teach you how to do it, but also I mean I know some pediatrician doctors and they say whenever they're about to do procedures, uh, whether it's taking blood or something that's not particularly nice for the baby, mm -hmm. they now swaddle the baby before and after just because it is proven that uh, the babies are not happy about that. And Megan loves it. And do you see an actual difference between Megan when she is being swaddled and isn't being swaddled? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Especially when they are newborn, um, the first couple weeks, they just sleep so much of the time. Mm. And you say you, you can't keep wrapping them in blankets and unwrapping them, especially the time when they're nappy and, and when you're soothing them. So it's just so much easier when you put the cocoon on. She, she does naturally calm down very quickly because she kick her legs a little bit, realise that she can't kick them a huge amount, mm -hmm. and just, again, Seriously? just calms down very quickly. So what would you say to people that uh, hit you with the flip side of the coin and say that, you know, the baby's not in the womb anymore, that's out in the real wild world. Why are you trying to keep it in a womb-like womb state? You know, let the baby get out into the real wild world. They've got to move the hands and legs. They've got to get used to not being connected to the mother the whole time. Yeah. Absolutely, but I think, as um, Yella mentioned earlier, it's, it's, when you're born, it's just such an instant thing. You can't make all, she's learning so much all the time. Every day she's doing something new and, and trying to understand where she's in the world. So you don't want to so say, well, okay, sleep on your own, in a blanket, off you go. Mm -hmm. think I want to help you make that transition yeah, a little bit, right. going to make it a little bit easier for you. And it's quite nice and cosy. I mean, yeah. think of yourself when you're, uh, um, when it's cold and wintry, you wrap yourself up in a nice blanket mm -hmm. or nice jumpers yeah. and things. So it's a, it's a little bit like having a sleeping bag, isn't it? Exactly, I'm just yeah. going to. I'm just going to hold this up. There are obviously various different uh, colours and designs and sizes, which is the important yeah. thing. This is obviously a very trendy uh, leopard skin one. Um, can you do me a favour, man? Can you hold Abby up a bit so we can see, so we can see her in that cosy cocoon, which is a similar one. So let, let's talk about sizes. Megan is how old? Uh, ten and a half weeks now. Ten and a half weeks, and, and you've done this from birth. And how long do you foresee doing it for? Um, probably until she grows out of it. Really? Yeah. So what are the largest sizes? What do they go up we to? We have up to six months. Yeah. Up to six at, months. At, at, yeah. at least until four months. And when it starts to get warmer, possibly, um, I might stop around, mm -hmm. you know, because she, she won't need it then. OK. And you don't think, you know, it's obviously not overdoing it. I mean, it makes it easier for the parents as well, if the child's yeah, happy, right. parents happy. Parents happy. OK. And then the, the last thing I want to ask is, uh, is when is it not a good idea? to swaddle a baby or to use the cosy cocoon? I mean, is there, is there a time when it's not a good idea? I don't think so. <laughs> That's uh, I mean, uh, maybe when it's very, very, very hot, mm. during the very hot summer, but it's quite unlikely to be. And like, and like we said earlier, it's kind of common sense. If, you, if their hands and legs are, you know, they're kicking, and, and right. it means That's they enough. want to move That's, their hands yeah, and legs, and you know that's them. enough. Yeah, some babies don't like don't like to be swaddled, and you, you'll get your clues from your baby. Mm. If, if if they're not enjoying it, stop and maybe try and reintroduce it another time. But mm. um, 
definitely it's, it's work to treat for her and we would have had a lot of more sleepless <laughs> nights had we not used it. It certainly has. Well, well, it's she's <laughs> the perfect example of a perfect baby to come in and talk about this because she has been absolutely angelic, brilliant. Okay, well, Yola, Abby and Megan, thank you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.